Artery Technology presents two fundamental software tools for creating code for programming and debugging its 32-bit microcontrollers. The first is the IDE software or integrated development environment, called a 32 ID, and the second, which I want to showcase in this video, is called a 32 Workbench, which helps the developer create C code for the microcontroller peripherals. You can download it from here, for both Windows and Linux. I already have it downloaded on my desktop. It's a compressed file, whose main content you can extract anywhere, and then, you simply need to run the executable file, which for now, for Windows, there's no installer. I'm heading to the schematic of the development board, mentioned in the previous video, to check which microcontroller model it uses. Here is the programmer section and further down we have the development microcontroller which is the 407 VGT7. In the workbench, we select the same microcontroller and ensure that it is the correct one, and then I press the new key to create a new project. You can see a drawing of the microcontroller with its terminals on the left and the peripherals it has on the right. The one corresponding to the general purpose or GPIO terminals is enabled by default, as it is assumed that a JTAG debugger will be used. The debug option is also enabled and I am going to change it to SWD. This is just a test to showcase the tool's capabilities. In the NVIC module, it's also enabled, but when the first project is done, I'll analyze it more thoroughly, if necessary. Let's say I want to use input and output terminals of the microcontroller. On the development board, I locate the push button terminal corresponding to port A, bit 0. I go back to the workbench and click on the PA0 terminal with the mouse and select the option for a digital input terminal. I can label that terminal, which I'll call SW. I go back to the schematic and find which terminal the yellow diode is connected to, it's PD14. I return to the workbench again and click on that terminal and select it to be a digital output terminal. I also assign it a label named LEDY. If we go back to the schematic, it can be seen that the microcontroller can use an external 8 MHz crystal. Going back to the tool, I try to configure the terminals where the crystal is connected to operate with that oscillator, and when I do, they change to yellow. That means they are configured, but there is some issue, something else needs to be configured. I go to the option where the device oscillator can be configured and you can see that the microcontroller's internal oscillator is being used. I tried to change that to use the external crystal, but it doesn't work, and the reason is that CRM is not configured. I go back to the pin configuration and revert the two terminals that are in yellow to the state when the MCU is restarted. I navigate to the CRM and enable the option for an external high-speed crystal, and by doing so, the previously yellow lines have now changed to green with the desired configuration. Once again, I return to the clock configuration, and now I can select the terminals for the external oscillator or crystal. Note that the maximum system clock frequency is 240 MHz. If I change the PLO multiplier value to a value greater than 30 to achieve 241 MHz, the clock value changes to red to indicate that problem. In the code view option, you can see how the code has been generated. There is the main file with all the functions that perform the selected configurations. In the WK config file, there are the configurations of the two terminals that have been set as input and output. All these configurations, if necessary, will be analyzed when a project is made. For now, they are just for you to get an idea of the utility of this tool. When pressing the button to generate the code, a new window opens with several options. For example, the project can be generated for different toolchain options. In my case, I stick with the AT32 ID. Then, I select my PC desktop as the location where the project will be generated. Then I select the package manager for the microcontroller for which the code is being generated, and I choose the option for the tool where the workbench should search for the package from the network. There is also the option to download it from the Artery website and then load it from a local path on the PC. 
The error that appears is because I forgot to assign a path for the package download, so I also select the desktop. Once the download is complete, we proceed to close the package manager download window. Then, we click the OK button to generate the project. We are informed of the successful project generation, and I proceed to open its location. Several folders can be seen, and I will open this generated project in another video when I install the at32 ID. The configuration created in the workbench can be saved, for which I click on File and then click on Design Save As. I give another name to the configuration and save it to the desktop. Once saved, I can close the workbench. I can reopen that tool and retrieve the configuration. And everything I created is not lost, that is, the terminals used, the oscillator configuration. That's all. Thank you for watching the video.